Okay, now we do have um, three terms here. We do have a trinomial. Let's go ahead. We can still factor this. Um, looks like we could use grouping, but really um, we don't need to. Um, what we're going to do here is factor out. We see a 3 can come out of each of those, so we'll factor a 3 out. And we also see we can take an x out. Okay. Um, if we factor those out, let's see what we have left over. We have an x squared plus 3 goes into 6 twice, and we still have an x left, so 2x minus... If we take 3 goes into 18 6 times, and this is what we have left here. Now we look to factor. Can we factor x squared plus 2x minus 6? Um, if we try our x method, we have a negative 6 up top and a 2 on bottom. We need to multiply to get to a negative 6 and add to a 2. I'm um, just going to help you out. We actually can't factor that any further. This is unfactorable that x squared plus 2x minus 6 so this is actually our final answer here okay let's go ahead and do part B now we know we can factor a 7 out of both of those um, let's also take an x squared out if we do that we have an x squared left minus 7 goes into 28 four times now let's check and see if we can factor here can we factor x squared minus 4 we think back to the last section, it's a difference of two perfect squares. So what we do is let's go ahead and use our shortcut, our little pattern. We know that the square root of x squared is x, square root of 4 is 2. Since it's a difference of squares, we're going to write it twice. One is positive, one is negative, and we have our answer. Now it's factored completely. We had to keep checking. We could factor one more step, and we're finished. Okay, last couple examples here. Now we have equals 10x. Really what we want, if we remember back to the last section, we want everything on one side of the equation. So let's go ahead and subtract our 10x over. And if we do that, we're left with 2x to the third plus 8x squared minus 10x. And don't forget equals zero. That, that's very important. We have to have that right side equals to, equal to zero. Um, now we look to factor. Can we factor anything out of... 2x to the third plus 8x squared minus 10x. We know a 2 goes into each of those. And each term has an x, so let's go ahead and factor out a 2x. Okay, what that leaves us with is an x squared plus 4x minus 5 equals 0. Don't forget that equals 0. Now let's go ahead. Um, our leading coefficient is 1, so we can just use our x method. We put our negative 5 up top. We put our 4 on the bottom. Um, what multiplies to negative 5 adds to 4. We can use a 5 and a negative 1. So what we have in our answer here is we have 2x. If we continue, we have x plus 5 and x minus 1, all equal to 0. Now we need to set each one of these equal to 0 and solve. We have 2x equals 0. We have x plus 5 equals 0. We have x minus 1 equals 0. Using our zero product property, we have to solve for x on all these. So we see on this first one, x is going to equal 0, x is going to equal negative 5, and x is going to equal 1. Okay, we actually have three separate answers there. Okay, last example here. Um, let's go ahead and factor out an x. And we're left with an x squared minus 25. Uh, equals zero. Now again, we see difference of squares. We see two perfect squares. So if we go ahead and factor that, we're going to have x plus five and x minus five equaling zero. Zero product property. Set them all equal to zero. In the end, we get x equals zero, x equals negative five, and x equals positive five. So three answers there again. Okay. We just need to on this. We can actually factor one more step. Okay. We said. We usually when we factor once we're done. Well, in this section, we got to check if we can keep factoring. Um, a, a lot of times we're going to end up with perfect squares, or we're going to end up with difference of squares, um, or perfect square trinomials.